Hey everybody, I hope you'll just give me about five minutes and you know I really have been thinking a lot about whether it's pronounced GIF or JIF and I called my friend Justin up to talk about it. So here's some clips of our conversation. See what you think. Let me know in the comments. Is it pronounced GIF or JIF? Yeah, so I mean, it's, people totally have been talking about is it GIF or JIF? And I always felt like it was GIF. You know, I, I thought because of the word graphics. And it's kind of like... I mean, that, that's kind of what makes sense. And that kind of, that's, that's, yeah, I'm not sure where GIF came from. I mean, I wasn't until I read a little bit about it. And so, yeah, I, GIF makes sense because of graphics the hard g plus i hear you say gif me five all the time and whenever you type it out i'm always hearing gif me five uh -oh. in my head I'd maybe like, you have some influence on me over that maybe what's hard g <laughs> hard g and soft hard g is the hard g is the g soft g is the j gotcha so steve wilhite in June 1987, releases the Graphics Interchange Format, or GIF, while working for CompuServe. He called it a GIF with a soft G. Choosy developers, he reportedly said, choose GIF. This was, of course, a play on the peanut butter brand GIF's line, Choosy Mothers Choose GIF. <laughs> wow. So... As musicians, I think this kind of, it, it's, it's a relevant conversation for us to have because as musicians, our job when we play a piece that's composed is to try to realize that piece exactly how it's supposed to be, or hopefully as close to how the composer imagined it as possible. So if, if Steve Wilhite, Wilhite, um, released the graphics interchange format or GIF and called it a GIF. I mean, I think that's our source material right there. It's true. I feel like it's, I feel like I just wanted to make the pun with give. That's basically what inspired it. So it's kind of interesting how visually I always thought it was GIF. Me too. Almost just because it's visually and I see November 12th got a long lapse in history like 18 years go by of this debate yeah. most people seem to prefer saying it differently back in 94 so after that 18 year of debate gif is selected as the oxford dictionary's usa word of the year in 2012 and then the dictionary mm -hmm. said gif may be pronounced with either a soft g or a hard g as in graphic I mean, it says it right there. The oh, yeah. question is, did they consult with Steve Wilhite in creating that entry? I mean, <clears throat> I would think that this kind of goes into a deeper debate of like how language develops. You know, what is the correct way of saying something? You know, somebody at, at some point may be the first person ever to say a word and then it makes it into a ver the vernacular but then it evolves over time do we try to stay true and kind of force it to be the same as it was in the beginning because that's how the original creator intended it or do we say nope language is oral in this case when it comes to pronunciation so therefore, we should allow it to evolve the way it has. Yeah, I feel that way. I mean, if I'm a composer and write something and someone has a different interpretation, I'm actually really welcoming with that. If, if you Unless it's wrong. It. Yeah, unsubscribe. <laughs> but, uh... <clears throat> All right, I'm going to text you a word. And I want you to pronounce it um, how you think it should be pronounced. Comfortable. 
Yes, that's how most people pronounce it. It's it's that's wrong though. It's comfortable. <laughs> and I like tried to correct. I I intentionally tried to just say it how I say it, which is wrong. So but, say it again. I say comfortable. I say four syllables. Comfortable. Yeah, comfort- comfortable. Comfortable. Let's see what the dictionary has to say what? about. See, they have multiple pronunciations. They could, you could put comfortable, 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 comfortable. You could even, even comfortable is acceptable to Merriam Webster. Comfortable wow. is acceptable to Merriam Webster. Well, unsubscribe, Merriam Webster. Ooh, ouch. Yeah. Oh, wow. Well. When I was uh, trying to become a better uh, general music teacher, because I didn't go to school to be a general music teacher, <clears throat> I was attending workshops with John Feyerabend. Are you familiar with him? I don't think so. John Feyerabend. So there's like the five uh, big music education names. You know, there's Orff, Kodai, Dalcroze, Suzuki, and Gordon. Yeah. Um, Fire Robin would be like a a close six. Like he would, I think he should be one of the five, but um, he's a close six because he took the best of Kodai. He was actually a a grand student of Kodai himself. He's still alive. And he's a student of Edwin Gordon. And he took the the best of both of those approaches and put his own thing together. Anyway, it's all based on folk tunes. And one of the things that, he talks about that folk tunes have in common is um, they don't have a single point source. So they're not from, you can't attribute them to a single person. They just developed somewhere. And number two is they're always changing. So depending on different, what parts of the country you go to, you'll hear different versions of the same tune as you know, they were spread and people kind of changed things, whether it was consciously or subconsciously. And that's part of the beauty of it. So it's almost like, you know, these words come into our vernacular that we didn't, ha- <clears throat> didn't have before, you know, because technology has developed so rapidly. And, you know, the no one's really sure how to pronounce it at first. And so there's this sort of this general consensus that develops. I still want to know like who, who decides, like, who decides, who's sitting at Oxford Dictionaries deciding, like, what new words shall we add this year? I mean, do they have, like, a, a board of people that decide, and they vote on it? And then when it comes to pronunciations, do they vote on that, too? And is it just a matter of, do they debate it? Like, we're trying to sort of debate informally right now, where they say, well... I've heard that everybody calls it GIF. And then someone else says, well, choosy developers choose GIF. The the original guy that invented it, it's not at that meeting. Yeah, exactly. I, I bet you $10,000 he wasn't at that meeting. What happened in April uh, 2013? White House announces its new Tumblr page where, according to New York Magazine, it threw down the pronunciation gauntlet with an illustration that told visitors to the page they can expect, quote, animated GIFs, hard G, and it's in parentheses, unquote. End quote. Yeah. This was the same year that we got Giphy, a GIF database that people could search for the GIFs that they wanted. And I know that I didn't even ever really realize that I uh, look up GIFs and it is giffy right you know that's i was thought so why why the ph though on giffy good point furthermore i think you know this is in 213 i mean that's just i think i think obama was kind of overstepping his his bounds i think the federal government really by telling us as the american people how we're supposed to pronounce gif i mean yeah it's like okay miss Okay, Mr. Obama. (laughs) Obama says that it's GIF. May uh, 2013, Will Hoyt, remember good old Steve, Uncle Steve? 
Yeah, he made uh, it. Steve Wilhite, Wilhite receives a Lifetime Achievement Award at the Webby Awards and used his platform to make his declaration. It's pronounced, I'm going to quote, it's pronounced GIF, not GIF, end quote, just like the peanut butter. Oh, and then, quote, the Oxford English Dictionary accepts both pronunciations, unquote. Will Hoyt told the New York Times, he goes on to say, they are wrong. It is a soft G pronounced GIF, end of story, end quote. But the article goes on to say, but it's not so simple. People on the internet disagree with him. Gizmodo declared him wrong. Twitter filled people expressing their disagreement. <laughs> Posted one. Graphics interchange format. Graphics, not graphics. Hashtag GIF. RG. Hashtag. <laughs> I'm pretty impassioned about that. In that same month, still, JM Smucker Company, which owns GIF, agreed that it's pronounced GIF. Well, of course they would. I mean, they're going to get that publicity, right? Yeah. Free publicity. They want to keep this thing going forever. Uh, let's see. Holy crap. June 2014, Obama actually chooses a side announcing his official position that it is pronounced GIF with a hard G like grape. He comes out and personally says it's GIF. So now I can come out and be like, you know what, Barack? <laughs> you know what, Barack? Get a little debate going, you know? Barrack Obama, if that really is what your name is. Pat him on the back. Barry, we have that <laughs> conversation. June 2014, a survey of more than a thousand Americans were asked whether they pronounce GIF as GIF or GIFT, and GIFT handily beat GIF nearly 54 to 41. It was conduct, con, it was conduced by eBay deals and a digital marketing agency. August 2014, designer Aaron Bazinet launches a website and he wants hard G pronunciation. It's the most okay. natural, logical way to pronounce it. That's why every, that's why when everybody comes across the word for the first time, they use a hard G. That sounds like my argument. Uh, let's see. Mental Floss wades into the debate with the help of a linguistics professor for a comprehensive analysis, ultimately deciding that both sides are correct and that the G in GIF really can go either way. I kind of feel like that's a cop out. A little bit. I'm like, definitely. I'm only capable of black and white thinking, so it has to be one or the other. It's like, give me five or give me nothing. It's not give me two and a half. Right. Um, and right. it's give me. So in that same sense, I am making a decision. Everybody, it's a hard G. I use GIF. Well, what clearly you are not a choosy developer. Yeah. Because you don't. And then we have a uh, July 2016 Newsweek declares it GIF with a hard G and has a linguistics professor to back them up. Okay. Linguistics Time out. Professor? Time out. We've heard two references to this so called linguistics professor. Yeah, and that's just. Who the hell is he? If he's not J.R.R. Tolkien, I don't give a shit. If it's not Neil deGrasse Tyson, I don't want to hear about him. Really. <laughs> February, ooh, is this, ooh, this is this year. February 2020. Online GIF site Giphy teamed up with GIF Peanut Butter to have some fun with that debate. The two companies unveiled a limited edition jar of peanut butter in GIF's trademark packaging but labeled GIF. Oh my gosh. While some may think the packaging implies that GIF and GIF rhyme, according to the two companies and a series of accompanying GIFs on Giphy, the opposite is true. I was highly interested in that GIF 
peanut butter. <laughs> yeah. And that <clears throat> was sold out like within two hours, I believe. I wonder if anybody is going to act like how many people are actually going to eat the peanut butter. Like, would it be more valuable to leave the peanut butter in the jar? Yeah, definitely would be, but then it's going to get, it would get moldy or something. Such a waste of peanut butter. That's like, it honestly, to me, that's not a sign that he loves us is peanut butter. It's true. At Giphy, we know there's only one GIF and it's peanut butter. Alex Chung, founder and CEO of Giphy, said in a press release about the campaign. If you're a soft G, please visit GIF.com. If you're a hard G, thank you. We know you're right. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. According to Giphy, GIF is pronounced with a hard G, unlike GIF the peanut butter. Is that the end of it? Probably not. Just put on those glasses and see what you can say. Um, I think, I think, um, you know what I think the problem is? I think it's this Alex Chung character who comes in and says, oh, it's a GIF because they got this website called Giphy.com. You know, that's not paying respect to the man who developed the graphics interchange format. Yeah, who is Steve Wilhite. Mm -hmm. He's not paying respects to Father Steve, Godfather Steve. Um, and what's the deal with the PA? Is that that one might not be an acronym. And then right away, I think about if you say Jiffy, then it sounds like the peanut butter that never existed, but that we thought existed. You know, yeah. The, the Mandela effect on Jiffy peanut butter, right? Yeah, Jiffy. where people probably mix up Jiffy and Jiffy. Yeah. I think that makes sense. Yeah, uh, I, I'm sorry. I've got to disagree with Obama. I've got to disagree with this Alex Chung character. I, I think it's Jim because, and here's my, here is why. Okay, I'm listening. So I made the point that <clears throat> folk tunes develop over the course of many, many years, generations, in fact. And there's no single source attributed to them. And you know they're truly folk tunes for that reason, but also because if you go different places throughout the country, you'll find that um, you'll find that there uh, there's different versions of it. So this case, uh, one only one of those two things is satisfied. Yes, in different parts of the country, or maybe it doesn't matter where you go, that'd be kind of an interesting study, but some people pronounce it GIF, some people pronounce it GIF, but we can point it back to a single source, and it's Steve Wilhite, and if he's the guy that came up with it, I think we owe him the respect to calling it GIF, because that's what he says it is. He called it a GIF. And it doesn't matter if it's short for graphics interchange format, if graphics has a hard G, it doesn't matter. He came up with it, it's his idea. He can call it what he wants to and we ought to respect that. And we can just agree to dish agree. No, I am not going to agree to that. You are wrong. And you owe me an apology. You owe me an apology. For for generations and generations, we've spoken this way. Yeah. And now I'm nothing has changed. Think... Nothing has changed. <laughs> that's from community. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs>